Okay, thank you for your the introduction and the present. And then this is one of my the bucket list city to travel in the world is uh, Saint Petersburg. Actually, this is my first trip to here, and I'm so excited. And then finally, I can make it to solve my one of my bucket list to travel. Is it please turn on my? Yeah, and my title is uh, the Ewing sarcoma. What is new in molecular aspect? And then before I to talk, we have to know that what is old. This is all. And then this is all. Actually, we took this picture in 1991 when we were in the Mayo Clinic. Here, you know recognize one people and she's one of my the best friend and old friend and we've been known each other more than the 30 years probably more than my wife that I thought and at that time I don't have any gray hair and my hair is all black and currently my is a totally different and Ewing sarcoma is one of the malignant, the, the small round cell tumor in bone, and the first most common malignancy of the bone. And 80% occur in the less than 20 years old, and five years survival rate is 50%. Despite uh, we do that, all kinds of multi-modal therapeutic approaches. And this doctor is James Ewing. Actually, he was born in 1866 and passed away in 1943. And he's the one of the, the founding members of the Memorial and Sloan Catering Cancer Center. And he had a little handicap on his foot. And then and his the favorite hobby is boxing. Yes. And then this is a typical Ewing sarcoma that radiographically we can see the very well illustrated onion skin appearance. And then this is a, actually onion skin. And this boy is a seven years old boy. We just discussed very well the, about the how to reconstruct a chest surgery. And then this boy had a, a several ribs involved. And then we resect it. And this is a typical gross picture of the Ewing sarcoma. You can easily recognize a huge extra osseous mass formation in the cut surface fish flesh appearance. This is a typical Ewing sarcoma gross morphology. And then cytologically, usually it forms the lobular fashion, or sometimes it is a, the code like arrangement. And then cytologically, usually the cells are pretty uniform, and then the chromatin pattern is quite fine chromatin patterns. And then CD99 is a product of MIG2 gene, and then it is a kind of the cell adhesion molecule. And it is quite the, the sensitivity to diagnosis of the Ewing sarcoma is a beautifully illustrated the membrane stain, not the cytoplasmic staining. However, it lacked the specificities. And then it is the, the really the important study, the 1122 chromosome translocation was revealed by 1983 by Dr. Orius. And then followed by the EWS on fly one gene fusion protein was discovered by Lela de la Tour from the French group. You know EGR? Is there any the audience came from the Germany? No. Is it, so I'm I'm pretty safe to what I'm going to the EGR is actually exhausted gas reconstruction circulation. If this is blocked, what happened to our car? This is happened. This is one of the famous B whatever the car from J country. And <laughs> this is quite often happened there. A lot of the EGR in Ewing sarcoma. Is the same exhaust gas recirculation? No. This is only gross response one.
nostri uh, ativ na rus azim. In Ewing Sakuma, the pathogenesis is, is one of the, the famous one is IGF-1 pathway. So IGF-1 pathway is a very, very important in, in controlling Ewing Sakuma signaling pathways. So we know, we try to know that the EGF-1 protein pathway in Ewing Sakuma families. There is EGF-1 gene is located in chromosome 5Q, and then there are several the promoters to activate the EGF-1 gene. And then this is the EBS is also one of the, the important the promoters. In 1997, Dr. Watson already described that EWS fly one gene is bind to EBS, and then it can stimulate the Ewing Sakuma pathways. This is a transcription factor binding site with EGF on the promoters. There are several ones to bind this pathway. And finally, this EWS fly one bind this EGR1 promoter site. And then, the other, if this the EGR1 bind to this pathway, especially GHG reach the promoter elements, and then you can control multiple genes such as IGF1 and TJ beta and so on. And then this is the IGF1 R gene, and then EGR1 gene is bind this way, and then this is the EGF. EWS gene, and this is a fly one gene, and then this is a binding protein, the fusion protein, and then this is EGR1 gene is binding this site. So IGF1R is a key growth factor for Ewing sarcoma the survival. So IGF1 binds to IGF1 receptor through downstream, such as the ras tor activity, and then it followed by the cell activation is the activated and the cell survival and proliferation and so on process is activated. So in Ewing sarcoma, the fusion protein EWS fly one gene is a very important. It's more than 85 percent is a the found in the Ewing sarcoma family. This fusion protein provided the oncogenic stimuli that transformed primary cells and constituting initial event of Ewing sarcoma the pathogenesis. Before that, we tried to see that the genus protein, actually genus is famous for the, the fibrous dysplasia. And then genus is uh, stimulate the G-alpha subunit and the cyclic AMP crap, and then it binds to this uh, promoter site of EGR1 gene. And then probably this activation of this signal pathway is activated. So we try to see that the genus, the gene status in Ewing sarcoma, and we did the immunostaining, and this is a high signal pathway, the intensity. So Ewing sarcoma family, we try to see that the high GS alpha expression is a 65 percent, and low GS alpha is a 34 percent. So we also did the, the mutation analysis of the exon eight and nine of genus gene. However we could not find any mutation at all. And then what about the, the methylation status? So hypermethylated group and hypermethylated group closely correlate with the GIS alpha the expression. Usually high expression group had a uh, usually hypermethylated group. And then also the patient with the survival group had it, uh, some of the, the statistically correlated but not significant correlation with the GS about the expression. So in our previous study, no mutation was found in genus location and methylation status correlated with GS alpha the expression. And then low GS alpha expression means that high permethylated status and then showing poor prognosis in Ewing sarcoma families.
So this is our the, uh, speculated uh, the signal pathway. So EGR1 gene is binded to this pathway. And then this IGF1 receptor, IGF1. F1 receptor is activated and then followed by this pathway is activated ERK. And then again, he is about the fly one gene. And it's also the autocrine and procrine activi activated all the, the pathway signals. And then if this is a, our speculated EGL1 the circuit, and then after the IGF-1 alpha is activated, this following by PI3 kinase pathway, the NACT pathway is activated, and then followed by TGF beta wind and SHS signal is activated. And so it means all the normal cells transformed in the Ewing sarcoma cells. So we try to see that the, what's going on in the Ewing sarcoma cells if we block this pathway in Ewing sarcoma. So in the commercially, it is now available the SI RNA, which means this SI RNA is a selective block the EGR1 the pathway. So we uh, commercially buy this SI RNA and then transfect it to the three different the Ewing sarcoma cell lines. So and then we try to see the, the northern blotting and western blotting and DNA expression, whatever we try to see that. And then we try to see that the protein expression of the EGR1 and IGF1 receptor and EWS and FLY1 gene status. So after the we transfected, we try to see the cell viability or say if we, if we transfected something into the cell, if the cell viability is a change, we cannot do the, the experiment anymore. So there is a no uh, changes in the cell viability, and the cell invasion or say we also did after we transfected EGL1 gene, there is a not significant the cell invasion or say, and then uh, this is a. EGL1 gene, the mRNA expression after the transfection of EGL siRNA. After transfected in the bottom, we can see the, the three different cell lines. And then this is a markedly decreased mRNA expression of the EGL1 gene. Also, after the transfection of the EGL1 siRNA. Here is the mRNA expression of the EWS fly1 gene is also decreased. So this is a IGF1R expression of mRNA also markedly decreased. So we know that after siRNA the transfected to the cell, these three the genes, the signal is mRNA expression is markedly decreased. And the followed by we try to see that the western blotting of this the after the siRNA transfection. You can see that the here is the EGL1 gene and the IGF1 receptor and EWS fly1 gene is a control fibroblast. However, in the Ewing sarcoma, one of the cell line, it is after the transfection, these are the, the protein level is markedly decreased. And this is the second cell line, and this is the third cell line. So in our study, EGL1 gene is an enhancer of EWS fly1 gene. So this is a carefully we can speculate it that if we block this EGL1 the gene expression and then we can use to treat Ewing sarcoma in the future in personalized medicine. So this is our next step to do that. The some of the validation, or paraffin block, copy number variation, or some of the, we do not know still the, some of the epigenetic study. Epigenetic means that, that there is no DNA sequence changes, and then it can change it, the genetic the transformation. So we try to see that the epigenetic changes. And then the next step is a xenograft of the Ewing sarcoma cells in the, the nude mouse, and then what's going on happen. 
That is our next step. Thank you for your attention.